This is lesson 3.1, and today we're going to be talking about atomic orbitals. Our goal is to learn what atomic orbitals are, what they look like, and their patterns in atoms. So before we begin, let's review a little bit about what we said in terms of hydrogen's energy levels. Remember that if you put hydrogen in a neon tube, put electricity through it, and look through a prism, you actually see a few lines of light, right? You got the red line, you got the teal line, you got some purple lines down here. And those lines, if you look at the energy of each of those types of light, you find that there's a pattern. And you can solve that pattern and get this equation for the energy levels within hydrogen, right? And you can solve for all the different energies of the different energy levels in the hydrogen atom. Well, it turns out that we can look at this in more detail to understand not only hydrogen, but all the atoms, and we can solve for not only the energy level, but actually describe and graph those energy levels and see what they look like. That's going to tell us a lot about what the electrons are doing inside the atom. Now, scientists studied hydrogen spectrum and found a pattern, which we've already talked about, and that pattern enabled them to develop a model to predict the probability of finding an electron at any location. And this equation right here is known as the Schrodinger equation, right? So the Schrodinger equation is a very, very complex equation, which we're not going to bother solving in this class. However, it's already been solved for us. And very nicely, the solutions to this equation have been graphed. And those graphs are things that we can look at and describe the patterns of how the different solutions look. There's a lot more than just one solution to this equation. All right. So when we graph it, the solutions are called atomic orbitals. An atomic orbital is literally the space occupied by the electrons is essentially telling you the probability of where you're going to find those electrons. And because one atomic orbital can hold only two electrons, that means most atoms have a lot of different atomic orbitals that have electrons in them. The atomic orbitals are first described by the principal quantum number n which describes how far the electron is from the nucleus. So basically, n tells you how big the atomic orbital is. The higher the value of n, the larger the orbital. So if we look down here at these three pictures, we have here n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. You can see in terms of those pictures, the bigger the value of n, the bigger the atomic orbital, and the further, on average, the electron is from the nucleus. In addition to that, you can also say that the higher the value of n, the higher the potential energy of the electron in the atomic orbital. Now, why is that? The reason for that is that electrons are negative and they want to be close to the positively charged nucleus. So the closer they are, the lower their potential energy. And remember, electrons want to go down in potential energy. So as you get bigger and bigger atomic orbitals, their potential energy will increase as they go further away from the nucleus and remember, they want to be close to the nucleus. Now, we're going to get into the details of this more later, but I want you to become familiar with how we label the different atomic orbitals. They are all labeled with a number and a letter. The number that's in front is what we've already talked about. That's the principal quantum number. And the letter that comes after it is the subshell letter, which we're about to talk about. OK, and so every different atomic orbital can be labeled with both a number and a letter. So this is 1s, 2s. 3s. And as you can see, each of these has all exactly the same shape, which is why the subshell letter is all the same, right? These are all s subshells, but their principal quantum numbers vary. This is 1, 2, and 3, which is why their size is different. n equals 3 is bigger than n equals 2, which is bigger than n equals 1. So what about these subshell letters? The principal quantum number describes the size, and the subshell describes the shape. So we have three different shapes. We actually have a lot more different shapes than that, but I'm first going to just describe three different shapes. We have the S subshell, which is spherical in nature. You have the P subshell, which has got this figure eight or dumbbell type shape to it. And then you have a D subshell, which has this cloverleaf type shape to it. And these are not the only different possible shapes. There are more and more shapes that are also available, but we can already see a bit of a pattern. As you increase the subshell letter, you're going to get a more and more complex shape. So it starts off as S, P, D, and then it goes to F, G, H. These subshells not only tell you about the shape, but they also describe the energy as well. The principal quantum number is more important for describing the energy, 
but these also affect the energy. So the S subshell, which is the simplest and spherical subshell, is the lowest in energy. As these shapes get more and more complex, their energy is going to increase. In addition to describing the energy and the shape, these subshells also have a different number of orbitals that are in them. The S subshell has only one orbital. There's not more than one S subshell. So for every principal quantum number, there is an S subshell, and each S subshell has only one orbital. The P subshells have three orbitals for each subshell. The D subshells have five orbitals, etc., etc. And we can see a pattern here. One, three, five. How does that pattern continue? Seven, nine, etc. These are all the odd numbers. So if you were to predict how many orbitals are in the F subshell, well, you know the F comes after D, so we know there are seven orbitals in the F subshell. All right, so I showed you guys some pictures of the S, P, and D subshells, but I want to go ahead and show you how I draw them. Because if you try to draw them exactly the way a computer draws them, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Now, the S is fairly simple. All right, we're just going to draw a circle for an S subshell. All right, so this is going to be our S subshell. All right, now the P subshell, we're going to draw more or less like an 8. So you can draw it like this, so you have kind of an, an 8 look to it, or you could draw it more like an infinity symbol, if that makes you happy, right? So this is going to be a P subshell, okay? Now, the D subshell, we're going to write like a clover leaf, and you can write it like this at an angle. So there's your D subshell. Or you can write it with the clover leaf like this, with an eight first, and then your infinity symbol horizontal. And there's one other shape for the D subshell. And I'd like you to learn it too. So the other shape for the D subshell is this. So first, you're going to draw an eight like this, but it's not an eight all by itself. You need to also put a donut around the eight, and it looks like this. It's more or less like an inner tube around the eight. So you go around like that, and then you put another ring around that to kind of give it an inner tube-like look. And if you had a pencil, you could also erase here and here to give it a better look. Or you can maybe predict that ahead of time. So it's kind of hard to do with a pen, but it's going to be more like this. And so we can draw our first inner tube and then our second ring like this, and you got something like that. So there are your different shapes that you can use for your D subshells. There are your P subshells, your S subshell. Have fun with it. Now here's a look at all of the different atomic orbitals for the S, P, and D subshells. So we see here at the bottom right, this is an S, right? It's just a sphere. Now the P subshells can be oriented multiple different ways in space. So we have one like this, one like this, one like this. And the D subshells, we have five different orbitals for one D subshell. And we notice that they are oriented different ways in space, right? You can have this clover leaf oriented different ways in space. And you also have this extra shape for the D orbitals. So very cool. These are graphical representations that were done by a computer, but we now have microscopes that can actually see into the atom. This is so cool. This was only invented a few years ago. We have pictures of different atoms, and this is known as the quantum microscope. So this is a picture of a hydrogen atom, and what you're seeing inside of the hydrogen atom are the different atomic orbitals. Now, I don't know exactly which one's which, but you can see the different atomic orbitals within the hydrogen atom. This is a picture of a carbon atom, and you can see clearly that you have an S subshell and a P subshell, and you've got different atomic orbitals shown there. So super, super cool. These atomic orbitals are not simply just somebody's theory or some kind of mathematical solution or computer simulation, but we can see through the quantum microscope that these things are real and they have a real physical thing that we can measure to show that these atomic orbitals actually exist. 
Now, in addition to that, there are a number of different rules and patterns that help us to understand how the electrons can go into the atom. Now, let's see. First of all, we have the principal quantum number. So a little bit of review here. The principal quantum number tells us about the size of the orbital. The bigger the number, the bigger the size. And then you have the subshells, which tell you about the shape. The higher and higher this subshell, the more complex shape you have. Now, in addition to that, not all of the subshells exist for every principal quantum number. Okay, so for a principal quantum number or energy level one, there's only the S subshell, and that's it. There is no 1P or 1D or 1F. There's only a 1S. There's only the S subshell for N equals one. As you go up in principal quantum number, so up to N equals two, you now have an additional subshell. So the principal quantum number not only tells you the size, but it also tells you the number of subshells. So for n equals four, you have four subshells. For n equals five, you have five subshells. So for n equals five, you can imagine that would have S, P, D, F, and G. For n equals six, you can have S, P, D, F, G, and H. So each time you go up in principal quantum number, you're going to add an extra subshell. The principal quantum number tells you the number of subshells in it. Now, some orbitals simply don't exist, and we have to understand this. So there is no 1D. N equals 1 has only 1S. There's no 1P, there's no 1D, there's no 1F, etc. For N equals 2, there's only 2S and 2P. There is no 2D. There is no 2F. Lastly, it's also important that we understand the relative energies of the different atomic orbitals. The energy of an orbital depends on the principal quantum number and on the subshell. First of all, the principal quantum number is the most important in determining the energy. n equals 1 is the lowest in energy, n equals 2 next, n equals 3 next, etc, etc. And there is no limit to the principal quantum number. You can have a principal quantum number of 10, 11, 12, which are all, of course, higher than the previous numbers. For a given principal quantum number, the subshells vary as follows. S is lower in energy than P, is lower in energy than D, is lower in energy than F, is lower in energy than G, is lower in energy than H, etc., etc. Now, we said that the principal quantum number is more important for determining the energy of a particular atomic orbital. So how do we combine this idea of principal quantum number and subshell? Well, they're first going to be like this. 1s is lower in energy than 2s, which makes a lot of sense, right? Because n equals 1 is going to be lower in energy than n equals 2. The 2s is lower in energy than the 2p. And that makes a lot of sense, too, because they're both n equals 2, and s is lower in energy than p. But next, we see that the 2p is lower in energy than the 3s. And that shows us that the principal quantum number is more important than the subshell. So indeed, the 2p is lower in energy than the 3s. And of course, 3s is lower in energy than 3p. I'm going to go ahead and stop here, and we'll wait till next time to talk about what happens after the 3p. Stay curious and keep exploring. See you guys tomorrow.